take whatever amount of footage I have and try to boil it down to about 30%. The thing is that you really don't know exactly how the footage is gonna play in the cut. You just really have to, you know, watch every frame. Editing documentaries makes you fearless. Louis didn't necessarily have like a very direct um, vision, not vision of film, but direct statement to make. He had a long list of topics that he wanted to cover going in. Um, when we started editing, he had shot for two years already, traveling around the world, just shooting the oceans, because the original goal for the film was to make a film about the depletion of the oceans and the coral reef and a much more general um, issue-oriented film. The most serious health risk of these high levels of mercury is to pregnant women. It's the fetus that's most sensitive to these levels of mercury. The children were starting to be born deformed. And it's going to happen again. By the time he discovered the story about Taiji, he had this long list of things like uh, mercury poisoning and um, the amount of fish that gets fed to livestock and um, how much uh, oxygen comes out of plankton and um, <laughs> all these different little mini bits of information that he just wanted to have in a film of some sort. And luckily he landed on this story in Taiji, um, but there was no real sort of central goal except to get all this information out. There was two parts to the mission. The first one was to get the auditory experience. Where can we drop a big housing spot like this with arms sticking out? Is there a snag in that? We could plant the hydrophones on the side of the lagoon that was easiest to get into. It's a lot easier going down the left side of the lagoon than the right side. The right side is right in the center of the killing cove. He edited this in Boulder, Colorado, and we would screen to people regularly, and there would be one screening where people would say, oh, the, the mercury poisoning and the buying of the votes and the, the way the government runs, all that stuff's great, but the mission's really kooky, so get rid of that. And then we would have other screenings where people would say, oh, the mission's really fun, but get rid of all that boring educational stuff. The dolphin meat is based on supply and demand like any other product. And if that product is poison and they can't sell it in Taiji, then they can't sell it in Iowate, they can't sell it in Okinawa, and they can't sell it wherever else they're selling it. So you have to stay focused on that one lagoon in Taiji, I think, in order to shut this down. The second mission, we call it full orchestra. Let's go in with three cameras. You're two, you're one, and think about fourth. We would plant all the rocks, the hydrophones, underwater cameras. But it was just very, it's very hard to separate um, what you are thinking of when you're in the editing room or your knowledge of from the shooting or from what your original uh, vision or goal is in the film. Just, Lou is very good about just finally stepping away from that and letting the surfers just become a 30 second piece in the movie to demonstrate um, a tactic that did not work and let Rick be the, the climax of the film and let his emotion sort of carry us into the end. <laughs>